Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you so much for joining us here today to hear about the amazing new initiatives we have with three of our most influential brands at SJC Media. Who knew we'd still be having this event virtually at this point in time, but here it is, and we're all together on another Zoom call. But it really does mean a lot to us that you've committed the time to be with us today. My name is Lynn Chambers, and I'm the SJC as Media Senior Vice President of Revenue. And we're speaking to you today at a time of renewed hope and optimism in this country. We're finally seeing the light of the end of the COVID pandemic in our sites. All around us, there's flourishing evidence of reopening on restaurant patios that are finally open in downtown quarters and lots of people pouring into the beautiful parks and green spaces we have in our cities. As a media company, We've served our audiences with urgent reporting on the colossal changes that have happened in our lives for the last 18 months. I know I started the job um, at St. Joseph Media on March 2nd, and literally two weeks later was working from home. So it's been a really, really interesting year for all of us. Um, but we're all interested in getting back to life as normal. And as we emerge from the pandemic, there's so much important stuff that's going on in our lives, our work, our families, everything's been transformed. And so today we'll be talking about the hope and the reopening and what it means for our audiences and our brands. So here's the plan. I'll give you a snapshot of who we are as a company in 2021. And you'll hear some of my very talented colleagues who are responsible for growing our media footprint in Canada. Soon I'll introduce you to Sarah Fulford, the editor-in-chief of our celebrated city magazine, Toronto Life, Alison Uncles, who's the editor-in-chief of Canada's urban affairs and a poli uh, politics icon, McLean's, and you'll meet the new team reshaping Canadian business for the leaders of tomorrow, editor-in-chief Char um, Charlotte Harold and associate publisher, Jason Maganoy. Our hope is that you'll come away from this presentation with a sense of where we're going how we plan to stay deeply connected to our audiences and really outline some of the specific opportunities that we have to work together with you in the near future. If you have questions, just pop them into the Q&A at the bottom of the screen. We'll have time at the end to bring back all the presenters and so you can ask any specific questions you have. We'll also be doing a draw for a pair of iPod, iPod headphones and give away some Longos gift cards. So, uh, just as a little incentive for your uh, generosity of tuning in today. So we reach, for those of you who joined us in our spring presentation, you know that SJC Media is a powerful network of media brands with eight, eight different um, titles that together reach nearly nine, 18 million Canadians. Hopefully it'll be next year, we have 19 million. Um, from that, in, this comes from our independently audited Vivid Data research and its unduplicated reach in Canada, which this amounts to reaching 60% of Canadians and 68% in English Canada. And we recognize that's a really, really enormous opportunity. And we recognize the responsibility we have on the influence that we have for so many Canadians. And it's a job that we take very seriously. And while we began as a publisher of magazines, creating beautiful and engaging stories in print, We've evolved as the media landscape has, mastering, creating communities, and engaging our brands across all digital and social platforms too. We have over 19 million monthly views across our sites and over a half a million newsletter subscribers with open rates that exceed industry benchmarks. Our social media footprint across brands and platforms is over 8.8 .8 million. In fact, if we had no print operations at all, we would be the largest digital pure play, play, pure play publisher in the country. So huge. We've delivered some of the most compelling and well attended signature events in Canada and the pandemic didn't stop us at all. We pivoted to virtual like many of you have executing hundreds of dynamic virtual events this past year. Membership's another way that we've been engaging with our most loyal fans, creating unique premium experiences and services to keep them proud of being part of our community. And we have a whole bunch of plans that we'll share with you today in a few minutes. We take great pride in the scale of our media network, the quality of our journalism and our custom content, 
and the diversity of our offering. For clients, we can create layered, customized client solutions that are innovative, scalable, and offer incredible value um, and performance, giving you unparalleled access to our premium engaged audience across our media stack. Among our best known offerings is our custom content unit, Patron Studio. Our branded content studio delivers expertise in custom brand storytelling across our titles and in formats ranging from video to articles to podcasts and live events. And we leverage SJC's authentic editorial approach to content. And we round out these programs with social promotion and impactful display placements. You can see a couple of the great examples on this slide of a content integration we did with Dove, a custom content called The Power of One that we did with Amazon and McLean's, and the recent infographic we did for and posted socially for Uber. So we're at the forefront, as I said, of the great reopening of Canada. And here in Toronto, at this moment of our long awaited reopening, there's no other media title as ardently followed as Toronto Life. So it's now my great pleasure to introduce you to Toronto Life's Editor-in-Chief, Sarah Fulford, to tell you a little bit more about what the future holds for our brand and our city. Thanks so much, Lynn, and thanks to all of you for coming today. It's wonderful to have so much interest in our work. I'm going to start today with a little piece of good news. This month, Toronto Life was awarded our industry's highest honor. This is the gold medal or Grand Prix for the uh, best magazine in the country. At Toronto Life, we aim to be relevant and meaningful in the lives of our readers, as indispensable as we are irresistible, and it was a joy to be recognized for all of our hard work. So before I give you a little preview as to what we're up to this fall, and we have a lot going on, I'm going to talk a little bit about where we have been, the journey we've been on along, along with the city itself. Over the last 10 years, um, I'm sure you would agree that the city has completely transformed from a quiet, obedient, a uh, largely Protestant Canadian city to a fascinating, exciting, genuinely cosmopolitan urban hub. It's been amazing to watch. And this influx of people and wealth and power has been exceedingly fertile ground for our storytelling. For those of you familiar with the brand, you know we tell crime stories and development stories and food stories and tech stories and dramatic memoirs that show our audience how the city is evolving. It's been a fascinating period in Toronto history. So I hope I'm not being too arrogant when I say that I believe Toronto is actually, Toronto Life rather, has played a role in the, in the city's rebranding. I believe that a magazine can actually help a community understand itself, understand its identity, be part of the cultural myth-making. And we try to communicate that Toronto is glamorous and multicultural and fun on every page of the magazine, every Instagram post, in every newsletter. So as Lynn uh, mentioned, we are, here we are emerging out of this pandemic. I hope, I hope. I got my second shot yesterday and my arm is a little sore, but in a good way. Um, over at Toronto Life, we were driven by a sense of mission during the pandemic to serve our community. Uh, cr a crisis is, is, is good for journalism, although it is bad for the world. Um, and during the pandemic, I believe Toronto Life's coverage was first class. I think it's why we won the gold at the NMAs. We covered inside ICUs, inside boardrooms, inside living rooms, inside classrooms. We regularly heard from our readers that stories from the magazine made them cry, it made them hopeful, it made them feel more connected. It was a very uh, galvanizing and meaningful period in, in the magazine's history. And on a practical level, we helped our readers find the best grocery delivery an amazing takeout, and that is not to be underestimated as a public service. I myself discovered great pizza joints and sushi places from reading um, the great work that our food and, and drink team produces on a regular basis. Our readership really responded to our efforts. Our emotional connection with readers grew. And so far this year, so in 2021, we've averaged 2 million unique visitors per month on our website. And we now have more Instagram followers than any other Canadian magazine. One of the things I'm especially proud of that came out of the period of the pandemic was our new e-newsletter, The City, which is uh, free. And I encourage you to sign up if you don't get it already. It comes into your inbox Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, 
And we really believe that a newsletter is a wonderful way to stay intimately connected with our readers. It's very uh, versatile. Um, and we populate our e-newsletter with um, restaurants we love, juicy real estate stories, cultural stuff we're really into, and the people and places we're just fascinated with at the time that we think our biggest fans and most loyal readers will be most interested in. So what are we doing now? That's the past and what is the future? Toronto Life is focused on playing the same essential role in the city's reopening as we did during the lockdown. Many economists predict that the next phase is gonna be an exciting, exuberant, modern answer to the roaring 20s. I don't know about you, but when I um, go out in the evening and I see the jazz bands in the park and the people dancing on little side streets, I think this feels a lot more like Paris than it feels like Toronto. And it's very cool to behold and Toronto Life is going to be on top of it. But reopening is also a little bit bewildering, not unlike locking down. And Toronto Life is gonna help our readers um, figure out where the best patios are, where the concerts are popping up, what cultural events they can do and should do, and what stories um, will emerge, and which influential people are going to become sort of leaders in the next chapter of the city's life. I'll give you a little sneak peek on what we're working on this fall. Here are some of the big stories and trends that we are following. So obviously, the digital disruption has changed every single industry. We're particularly interested in how that's changing telemedicine now that you have doctor visits on your laptop. We're doing a big package on e-medicine. We are really interested in um, the explosion of laneway houses. A small bylaw change in 2018 has led to uh, the growth of really cool architectural um, innovations and laneways and garages and backyards across the city. So we have a big piece coming out on that. Uh, psychedelics may well be legalized in the coming months, and we, we know our readers are curious about what they do and how that's going to all work and what they are, so we have a package on that. Hollywood North. Um, right now, there's so many movies and TV productions happening in the city that the sound stages can't keep up, so we're going to dissect that, who the players are, what's being filmed. It's very fun. And of course, we're going to keep our readers informed on the important changes in the food landscape, tacos, burgers, bottled cocktails. We have a pet guide coming up so that our readers can figure out what to do with that puppy they adopted during the pandemic. And I'm especially happy to report that we are redesigning our website to be more inviting and exciting. We're spending a lot of time on it and the early pages are sparkling and engaging. And I really look forward to sharing that with you and with the world. Our special interest publication this fall, it's going to come out just in time, just before the uh, you know Thanksgiving Christmas season and the fall when people are really thinking about food, is the definitive guide to the best food shops in the city. We did a 100 Best Restaurants edition a few years ago. It was massively popular. At Toronto Life, we really like ranking things. Um, when you rank things, when you have a first, the second, and the third, it leads to controversy in the best possible way and debate and our readers are very engaged and really want to tell us what we got right and of course what we got wrong. So we'll be ranking the best butchers and cheesemongers and bakeries and the digital version of this is gonna be awesome. And I really do hope we're gonna be able to have some kind of event tied to it in the fall. Um, I look forward to all our in-person events coming up and uh, getting back to a time when we can greet our readers in person. So that gives you a little window into what we have planned. And with that, I will pass the torch back to our fearless leader, Lynn Chambers. <laughs> hey, Sarah. Um, I want to just share with you some ways to be involved as a partner with Toronto Life. And so I'm going to just share some of the uh, special highlights we have upcoming for the uh, next few months. Um, we have some exciting special issues coming up. As Sarah mentioned, um, the 100 Best Food Shops SIP. It's a great way for brands, large and small, to get involved. Small shops can be part of our digital marketplace, while larger brands can show their support for these small businesses that have had to pivot during COVID with a full multi-channel sponsorship, similar to what Stella Artois did with the Chef Artois video series in partnership with Toronto Life uh, last spring, uh, which was in support of Rally for Restaurants. This fall, we'll also publish our legendary most influential list in December, which show cases the movers and shakers who are making a difference in our city. And we'll certainly look forward to the return of Best Restaurants issue, which will be in April 2022, where we feature the top restaurants in the city 
we're really anticipating there'll probably be a whole lot of new faces on that list uh, in 2022. We're all anxious to get out of our homes and start exploring Toronto again. And as you know, Toronto Life has had some great signature experiences and events. Um, and we've got more planned for the safe return to live events, um, including a most influential event and most stylish event. We're also creating some uh, new initiatives like the Toronto Life Insider Summer Barbecue Series, as well as the Future of Hollywood North Summit, which will be in September. These are great opportunities for brands to sponsor, be a sponsor of a live event where your products and services can be part of the experience with sampling and meeting fans to share your brand message with them directly. With our innovative direct-to-consumer initiatives like Toronto Life TL Insider and TL and Runner and TL Chef's Pantry, we have the ability to create special brand experiences with direct-to-consumer as a cherry on top. Think about beautifully curated food and drink products delivered directly to your home layered with a virtual or real life masterclass offering special and fully integrated experiences. As Sarah teased, we've also got some compelling marquee features lined up for the fall that our advertising partners can leverage. For example, the upcoming Toronto Life October cover story on, medic on medicinal psychedelics provides cannabis companies new to this uh, area the chance to surround themselves with contextually relevant content. Bookmarking the feature with brand ads lets brands be part of the story as we educate and influence our readers on the featured topic. Another great example of this strategy was how Remax um, recently surrounded our Cottage, Cottage Wars cover story in our June issue. They had an opening and closing ad page um, surrounding the feature, showing all the ways Remax can help them in their cottage purchase journey. And now, Turning to Maclean's, um, which has been a staple in the homes and lives of Canadians for over 116 years, it gives me great pleasure to welcome Editor-in-Chief Alison Uncles as she discusses the exciting opportunities of the storied media brand. Over to you, Alison. Thanks. Thanks so much, Lynn, and thank you for joining us, everyone on the call. Well, you'll all know that Maclean's has an outsized footprint in Canada and in Canadian journalism. What you might not know is kind of inside the soul of the team who produces McLean's and, and what we feel about this brand. Um, for a lot of us, we grew up reading McLean's in our homes or we moved to Canada and learned to love this country through the pages of McLean's. So working for, the, working for McLean's and kind of leading this brand is an absolute dream come true. It's a massive career highlight and uh, we take so much pride and um, so much pride in this job and this brand. So McLean's has seen it all. We've done it all. Uh, we've covered 33 federal elections over the years, epidemics, pandemics, even the Spanish flu, two world wars, women's suffrage, kind of lived through the world changing a few times. So the idea that the world has changed this time um, is not disconcerting to us. We've got pivoting in our DNA. We're quite good at it, we think. So we're poised to take on the future at a time when trust in leaders has really plummeted and concern about fake news is up. We've seen a seismic shift in readers' interests over the last little while, particularly younger readers who um, used to kind of equate civic engagement with voting and who've now turned to activism around race and the environment as ways to express their concern about the country. So we'll be covering all that and more in the weeks and months to come. It's such an exciting and inc incredibly interesting time to be a journalist and to be covering these issues. But what hasn't changed is trust in McLean's. In fact, at the very beginning of the pandemic in March, we saw our web numbers soar to 7 million uh, unique viewers on mcleans.ca in part because people were seeking out trusted information and um, we were so pleased that they came to McLean's for that. But it's not just readers who are uh, really attracted to McLean's. Big names come, come to us in all kinds of forms. And I really wish that you could be on a call with me or on an email exchange when I'm chatting with a celebrity or a politician 
a big, an academic or an author to ask them if they might be interested to come to an event or to write a piece for us. I often am in the fangirl position, um, asking them to kind of be part of McLean's. And what I hear back almost without exception is fangirl and fanboy on their part, where they're so pleased to be asked to, um, participate and to and to come up close to McLean's. So even I, even we underestimate the power of our own brand. And I think I really love this this slide with the Rosalia Bella cover, which we just produced because I think it it speaks well to that point. Rosalia Bella is probably the Supreme Court justice that we can name the one uh, in Canada, you know, Ruth Bader Ginsburg's equivalent here. And for years, for decades, when she was sitting on the Supreme Court, she, she said she wouldn't answer questions until she turned 75, and then she would answer questions. So when she chose to break her kind of decades long silence, she chose to come to McLean's. And I think that speaks volume about the power of this, this brand. Um, I'm hoping it also translates into some kind of light bulbs going off for you in terms of possibly working together on events and powerful series that include these people, these big names in Canada. So where we're going, we're embarking on a redesign. Uh, we're a little bit overdue. We haven't redesigned for 10 years. And in the last few years, we've really been devoting our energy to growing digitally. We've done really, really well. Um, in the past few years on the web. And we hope to translate that kind of, just to make sure that we're being as smart uh, and looking as smart as we feel we are on the web in print. So that means investing in better paper, um, that binding, the perfect binding that kind of denotes quality for magazines as well as more pages. Um, we're really hoping that, hoping you agree that our look has become more urgent and elegant. We feel it's absolutely gorgeous, but this change is going to be about more than cosmetics. It's going to uh, have a little bit of a renewed focus on photography, but also leaning in quite heavily to zeitgeist stories and adventure, trends and profiles and a dash of celebrity. More pages are going to help us create this vibrant mix of stories that Canadians just have to read. Right now, um, we know our readers love our long reads and that they come to us to understand politics and that they're riveted by profiles of new thinkers and who's gaining power and who's losing it, new trends in parenting and education and health. The new us is going to be more feisty, more vibrant, more beautiful, and even more relevant. So we can't wait to unveil that new us and hopefully find ways to work with you. Thank you so much for your time. And back to Lynn for more ideas on how to dovetail with McLean's. Great. Thanks, Alison. It's looking beautiful. Can't wait to see it in the September issue. So along with the stunning redesign coming with our September issue, we have a whole bunch of more exciting ways that you can work with uh, uh, McLean's and uh, leverage the credibility and the strong reach. Um, for over 30 years, McLean's has led the way in ed education coverage and has taken the position as being one of the most credible sources for post-secondary information across print, digital, social, and events. Over the last three months, our education hub on mclean's.com has averaged over 618,000 page views. From university rankings, colleges, and university guidebooks, coverage of MBA, distance, and private school education, Maclean's has become the trusted source for trusted information on our school system in Canada. Schools are smart to engage in this environment to help them stand out. And we can do that by helping you create custom content that showcases your school's unique attributes to help you stand out amongst your competitors. Also with the strong foothold on political coverage that McLean's uh, events like Parliamentarian of the Year or In Conversation with Paul Wells offers, um, they become must attend events for getting the scoop on what's happening inside of Ottawa, inside Ottawa. This year, uh, since we do anticipate a fall election, we'll pivot to a Welcome to the Hill event, which provides sponsors the opportunity to connect with the newly elected members of parliament or Canadian political elite. And then later this year, we have a new program we're introducing to fill a much needed gap on getting information on long-term care homes in Canada. We're partnering with Statista, which is a world leader in research 
to develop a national ranking of these homes. It's important and critical information for Canadians so they can use it to help make decisions on which long-term care homes are safe. Again, this will provide sponsors with the opportunity to build accreditation and awareness programs showcasing uh, the top ranking homes. And then lastly, uh, in January, we'll have the year ahead, which is always a bestseller on newsstand outselling The Economist twofold. The year ahead provides a deep insight and coverage on the most pertinent issues facing Canada in the year 2022. So it's important and it gives the opportunity for business leaders from um, technology, finance and healthcare sectors, to name a few, um, to be part of this environment and to show themselves as a leader as well. One of the most exciting reinventions at SJC Media that we've been working on is the relaunch of uh, Canadian Business. So here to tell you more is Canadian Business's Editor-in-Chief, Charlotte Harold, which and then followed by Associate Publisher, Jason Baganoy. Thank you so much, Lynn. And I'd love to echo my fellow brilliant colleagues in thanking everyone for taking the time to be here. Also for giving me an excuse to put on the lipstick that's been languishing in my bathroom cabinet. So really appreciate that. Um, I know many of you are probably very familiar with Canadian business because like Toronto Life and McLean's, it's got a really long history. It um, actually goes back to 1928. So we're coming up to its 100 year anniversary. And over the decades, it has evolved um, quite a bit with the ever changing business landscape and ultimately just coming to deliver storytelling that really mattered to the Canadians at the forefront of these changes. But now CB is going through another growth spurt. I'm excited to share with you that this fall we'll be launching a redesigned website and a new print magazine that we really feel is equal parts inspiring, inciting, and just incredibly gorgeous. So what's behind this relaunch? Well, in 2021, business leaders are really just radically different from who were traditionally considered to be the C-suite norm even just a few short years ago. Um, as you can see from some of these statistics represented here, these leaders today really represent the gamut of industries. Um, increasingly, they're young, they're mothers, they're new Canadians or they're children of immigrants. They're entrepreneurial at rates that this country has just never seen before. Um, pictured here is Lena Yousefi, uh, and she just fits this description to a T. She checks all these boxes. She's a wildly successful lawyer and the founder of Y Law, and she's actually also a member of CB's inaugural Leader in Residence program, which uh, is a, an exciting program we've just soft launched in the last few months. And my colleague Jason will tell you a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Um, but with these shifts towards a more diverse and equitable workplace already underway, what's been so interesting is how the upending effects of the pandemic have really accelerated this change, um, both in these demographics um, and also in the people that we're noticing are interested in reading about business and journalism. So not just those that are the business leaders in these, in these uh, companies and on these boards, also the audience that we want to reach through this magazine. So with the relaunch, we're profiling this new demographic of leaders, but we're also targeting a modern audience by removing what we see as the sort of traditional gatekeeping barriers and making business journalism more accessible, more exciting and more inspiring to really everyone and anyone who wants to have an impact and derive more meaning and value from their work, whatever it is that they do in their profession. So one of the ways that we're doing this is through a new focus on the creative side of business and where it intersects with how we live. And as you can see here from some mock-ups of our new cover direction, we're really focusing on beautiful design and we're going to have a whole section dedicated to smart design, both in the book and on our new website. Um, so in this section, we'll be featuring shoppable selections of some of our favorite can't live without items for the workplace and the home office. Uh, we'll also be sharing some profiles on of the moment designers, as well as some of their inspirations for what gets them motivated to do their work. And then we'll be sharing inside looks at really cutting edge cool workspaces, um, whether that's uh, someone's home office in their really inventive backyard shed, or it's uh, a new uh, way of working in a shiny downtown high rise. 
And in addition to just loads of inspiration, we'll also be providing uh, some really practical, proven in the real world advice from both individuals and from companies that have really figured out just the best ways of how to do everything better. So whether that's mastering a new technique, um, running a new department, or implementing a new protocol in the workplace, we'll be sharing all of their tips. And then in addition to some of these always on content features, we're also going to have some really exciting marquee features. And I'm excited to uh, share the first two with you that'll be coming up in our first two relaunch issues. Uh, so appearing in our November issue and online at CanadianBusiness.com in October will be How I Made It. And this will spotlight the influential Canadians that have really cool jobs and have had really milestone years for their careers in 2020 to 2021. So this will come to life in a series of uh, as told to many profiles where these 10 professionals from across a variety of fields and it can be anything from fashion and beauty to tech to healthcare to entertainment and more uh, they will share the obstacles they've overcome the milestones they've achieved uh, and their big break moments and then importantly they'll also share their wisdom and advice for the next generation of leaders that are stepping into their professions and then up next in our second relaunch issue, which will be our January 2022 issue, is the new innovators. And this will be in partnership with the Brookfield Institute, where Canadian business will be reinventing our longstanding growth list program. Uh, so this will, this will be the first year of this new annual program uh, that will recognize the companies that are really driving progress today for Canada's success in the future. So we'll be taking a more modern and holistic approach to measuring what we think is the true impact of a business beyond just its year over year revenue. Um, so this brand new annual ranking will consider key drivers uh, like sustainability and diversity of staff, in addition to some of those more traditional measures like product innovation and market valuation. And we'll be ultimately arriving at a list of what we feel are truly the most innovative companies in Canada. So as you can see from this glimpse of what's to come, the new CB is really about bringing together and celebrating our country's most progressive visionaries in their groundbreaking work. Um, we wanna give these leaders and then anyone who wants to learn from them, the resources and the inspiration to just continue to innovate, to connect with each other and really keep uh, challenging the status quo in Canada. Uh, so with that, I will pass it off to our associate publisher, Jason Maginoy, who will tell you a little bit about how we're translating all of this exciting content into some 360 experiences. Thank you, Charlotte. And thank you everyone for joining us today. So basically, we're creating a really cool magazine. And one of the things that we really wanted to do for Canadian business was we wanted to make sure that we created client solutions that reinforced each other, that were innovative, scalable, and offered immense value and performance across the customer funnel. And we also wanted to make sure that we were building a marketplace of signature clients composed of the best brands in the country. And we are off to a great start. First off, we want to drive lifelong learning and connection, and we're going to be doing this through the Canadian Business Leadership Circle. What it is, is it's a C-suite leader in residence program. So every month, Canadian business will bring on board a different CEO from across every sector in Canada to discuss the evolution of corporate leadership and business innovation. We are focused on big aspirational storytelling themes, women in leadership, how to build a great career, leading through crisis and sector innovation. And this year, we are welcoming some incredible leaders. We've already welcomed Geraldine Hughes, the president of Procter & Gamble, Lisa Colhans, the president and CEO of American Express Canada, Lena Youssefi, founder of Wyla, is in residence right now, Alan Lau, the co-founder and CEO of Wattpad is coming up, and next month, we have the brilliant Arlene Dickinson, who will be in residence with us, with more to come. The new Innovator Summit, is gonna be adjacent to the new innovators issue. And it is gonna be a one of a kind hybrid experience adjacent uh, to the new innovators, which is the evolution of our fastest growing companies list. So what is it? It is a month long experiences takeover in November that will offer intimate in real life and virtual experiences. And again, tell big innovation stories about corporate social responsibility, diversity, sustainability, and more. 
What can you expect at the new Innovator Summit? Think keynotes, design thinking labs and masterclasses, thought leadership panels, in real life social clubs and intimate networking dinners, all capped off with a powerful awards portfolio celebrating the best in leadership and innovation in Canada. CB Talent is going to be a go-to resource for young professionals in Canada. So the bottom line is people are in career life transition right now and having a great resource to find a job and build your career in Canadian business on Canadian business makes sense. It will be a job board, it'll be a hub for career development and talent workshops, and it will also drive compelling content and virtual experiences about the evolution of talent strategy and the future of work in Canada. We also have a corporate membership program. So connect with business leaders through Canadian Business Insider. So CB Insider is our new corporate membership program. And what will it offer your business? It will offer discounted ticket access to our signature events like the new Innovator Summit. It will provide you with access to a dedicated community Slack channel with other CB insiders. And the best perk of all, and I know that you're probably looking for a perk like this, it will also offer a 50% discount for display advertising and custom content on Canadian business. So in terms of value, don't take our word for it. We have a great inaugural cohort of corporate members who are already finding immense value through the program and we haven't even relaunched yet. P&G, TELUS, Uber, Tricon Residential and CIBC are members and we have some great clients already finding value in the ecosystem. UHN, RBC Investees, Porsche and more. So in the end, we are here to help from beautiful print to digital content to white label to experiential. We offer value and performance everywhere and we can't wait to work with you. Thank you, and I turn it back over to Lynn. All right, thanks everyone. Um, thanks Jason and Charlotte. Um, really exciting things going on with Canadian business, so great to see. So that wrap, wraps up the exciting news that we had to share with our three legendary brands at SJC Media, but we'll be back in the fall, hopefully in person, and that, and that will be an important time that we give you an update on what's going on with our lifestyle brands, with Chatelaine, today's parent, fashion, and hello Canada. But before we sign off, I'd like to thank each one of you. You're our cherished partners, and thank you for your time today, but also for your continued support and for your business. It's an honor to serve you and working together to find ways to activate your brands. Your partnership is at the heart of what we do, and we really appreciate you. So with that being the end, I'd love to invite our panelists back together. And I know there's been a couple of questions popped into the Q&A and I'll uh, be able to facilitate um, going through those. So come on back on board, everyone. Okay, so the first question is coming from, um, from Lou. Hello, Lee, Lou. Um, with paper increases going up tenfold, what are your leaders doing to encourage magazines to reduce their printing and move to a more advanced digital version? Are there incentive, incentives, etc.? So maybe I'll start with this question and, and throw it to Jason after. Um, but yes, I mean, obviously um, paper increases is um, something that we're always very wary of, but we really do believe that there is a place for magazines long-term in the world. Just like nobody's giving up on books and everybody thought everybody was going to transition to um, ebooks, like holding something tangible in your hand and having that experience and that time you can spend uh, with a paper product is something that we don't ever see going away. Um, but having said that, of course, we are um, really evolving our digital opportunities. We work very closely with Apple News um, and um, so it is something that we're, you know, reducing paper in other ways as well in terms of some of our subscription renewal efforts. Um, so there are a lot of things that we are working on to kind of reduce our, our use of paper. But at the core, we are have a beautiful print product and it's part of the experience of long form journalism is being able to sink into, um, into that experience. Jason, anything else to add? Yeah, I'm mean, just taking from what, what Lynn is saying. It's really, there's something really beautiful about analog and there's something really special about spending meaningful time with someone in their home. And that's where we all are. So I think that um, print magazines are definitely going to have a, a great way to connect with people. And I think that from what you've seen from this presentation, something that's really important is just that diversity of brand experience all across the board, whether it be a really meaningful encounter with a print magazine to an event 
to great custom content. In the end, uh, we want to touch people in a lot of different ways. We want to add value to how people are living their lives wherever they're living their lives. And uh, as long as that there are a lot of different ways that you can experience our brands and those ways are meaningful for you, that's the space that we want to occupy. I agree. Um, we have another question from Julie Myers. Hello, Julie. Great to see you're uh, in attendance today. Thank you. Um, for all your brands, how is the print business in terms of subscription circulation and audience appreciation? Is print out of step with young Canadians, millennials, millennials or Gen Z? As an advertiser, why should we include print rather than just your digital properties? What are you doing to ignite the print reader? By the way, I love the print experience personally. Um, so do I, Julie. <laughs> um, thanks for that question. Um, you know, it's really interesting too, um, because we do work with a lot of advertisers just on a digital, or digital first basis, because we do have great scale and reach across our digital platforms. But what's really, really interesting is we only have 10% duplication between our print and digital audiences. So by adding, adding print onto your media buy, you're really, really opening up um, a lot of reach to a user that you're not reaching digital, digitally. And, you know, to the point about, you know, what are we doing to attract um, young Canadians? You know, I would say that young Canadians very much are interested in, in print and reading still. And we can see that, in, especially with brands like Canadian Business that are doing some very, you know, really innovative things to help, you know, um, with mentoring programs for young entrepreneurs and being part of the CB Talent Board, you know, these, these are things that are very definitely kind of attracting, um, you know, that younger reader. Our events are often very much, you know, a very hip place to be when you get back into, you know, the best restaurants events. So, you know, these are all part of our brand experiences that, you know, at the core start with the, the magazine, but extend well beyond to many different platforms. Um, does anyone else, uh, the, the panelists want to jump in with a, response to Julie's question? Sure, I'll just add that um, at McLean's, the McLean's University franchise is a really great funnel for us that, um, you know, we produce three print guides a year, university guide, university ranking and colleges guide. And that helps get younger pe people in our um, orbit and then we help we we transition them over to newsletter from newsletter to newsletter and um, get them involved in the print edition and digitally. So um, for us anyway at McLean's, that's a quite McLean specific answer. But the university franchise is a really wonderful way to attract young people and then pull them along the McLean's kind of life cycle. <laughs> Great, thanks, Allison. Um, here's a fun question for Sarah. What are the three of your personal favorite spots in Toronto? <laughs> that is very fun. Um, I, I'm dying to get back to some cultural venues that I haven't had access to for many months. Uh, Kerner Hall is always a great night. It almost doesn't matter what I'm hearing there. Um, I miss art galleries more than I expected to. So the AGO would be high on my list. Um, for cafes and patios, I love the top of um, the Broadview Hotel. It's kind of a romantic spot. And Cafe Nervosa in Yorkville right now has an amazing patio. Um, I would also say during the pandemic, I did a ridiculous number of nature hikes. I'm married to a bird watcher. And so I was in the Rouge uh, Park. I, I really know the Rouge hikes exceedingly well. And it is a treasure within the city's limits. So. Um, I, I, I recommend a, a day at the Rouge. Amazing. And, and for anybody who knows me, you know how, how much I love music. I'm so much looking forward to getting back to, to see Massey Hall. Really exciting that they've uh, really announced their uh, programming uh, for their reopening. And it's really got some incredible uh, Canadian iconic acts. And, you know, it's been renovated. I mean, they picked the, per picked the perfect time to do the renovation because now that things are opening up, we're gonna see how the beautiful um, renovation and see how good it's gonna look. So I'm, that's what I'm super excited for. Um, this is a question, I guess, for any of the editors, but um, what does it take to win a National Magazine Awards cover of the year? Um, Allison, I know McLean's just uh, got that famous honor and uh, I know Toronto Life was magazine of the year. So between you two, like what would you say it takes to make an iconic uh, cover? 
I'm going to definitely defer uh, to Sarah because she's the big winner. Let, <laughs> let's hear from her first. I'll chip in after for sure. Oh gosh, I don't know if there's any simple formula, but um, but obviously staying current is the key. Like being relevant and on on the on the sort of um, riding the wave of what is matters to our readers right now is our mission and informs everything we do. Um, obviously, there's a tremendous amount of artistry and care that goes into every individual piece. A uh, piece of writing it can be beautifully edited and researched. Um, great photographers uh, have a wonderful point of view that is original and hard to replicate. Um, but in terms of sort of the brand mission, it is uh, keeping your finger on the pulse. It's very convention. It's sort of sort of obvious, but that is when you're trying to explain how we live now to a readership. Um, you you have to be aware of the changes on the horizon. So just staying hugely abreast and informed and engaged with the world. Journalists um, thrive when they're naturally curious people. And I work with a wonderful team of people who are just genuinely interested in stuff and that helps a lot. But covers, Allison? <laughs> Yeah, I, I, you know, the cover answer would probably be different for each brand, a little bit different. Um, for us, definitely, there needs to be a reason why this cover is happening right now. Um, so that's that's to Sarah's point about relevancy and urgency. Um, we like on the McLean's cover, we like to say big things about big things and big things about little things. We love it when a little thing means something bigger. Um, we we love tapping into the zeitgeist and a Above all, I guess we we want to be surprising. So the cover that we just won for was um, a black and white, very very stark cover, a photograph, full full bleed, as we say, the whole front, um, taken by a, a, an emergency room doctor during the depth of COVID, and it was someone being intubated, kind of from the end of the bed. It was a, a very surprising, arresting disturbing but also uh, incredibly powerful picture um, that for us really encapsulated that moment of the the darkness of kind of April, March, April last year. Um, so yeah, for us, there are a couple of boxes that we need to tick on our cover, but the, the biggest one for sure is surprising. And for for us, that, that picture really did it. Oh, that's great. Um, Okay, we have another question here. Um, you mentioned Patreon Studio and the power of custom content. Why would an advertiser choose to work with you over an agency? Um, well, I guess I can start with that one. <laughs> um, I guess, you know, the real secret sauce uh, behind Patreon is, you know, they are from an editorial kind of voice and they apply that editorial voice to a brand and really are able to storytell and build out the attributes that we're trying to communicate, but do it in a very natural, authentic way that really is in line with um, the editorial of, of the that it's environment that it's going to be fitting into. Obviously, working uh, within our team, you know, they have a good uh, knowledge of kind of what editorial lineups are for each of our titles and can really marry uh, the right opportunity as you know, I've given you some examples during the presentation about how we can wrap brands around and make sure that they're in that contextually relevant environment. And that's really what helps um, the brands kind of leverage that, that trust that um, we have with our editorial and you know, really kind of create a halo effect uh, for that trust with the brand advertiser. And I'd say lastly, it's really a full service um, operation you know, where we can do everything from photography to writing to production, you know, with the brands having the opportunity to uh, be involved. So, uh, you know, with approvals, um, as long as they're understanding, you know, the brand voice and, and that we're trying to um, do it naturally. So that's how I'd kind of respond to that. Um, anyone else want to jump in with an additional comment? Well, I can make a quick plug, which is that they are incredibly talented people and you could go outside of that team, but you wouldn't find anyone more competent or creative or imaginative and capable. So um, that I, I can vouch for that because I work with them and they're great. Oh, that's super. I'll say the uh, same, just um, completely 
delightful to work with on, on top of being incredibly capable and creative, um, just really wonderful people that are, are a true joy to um, collaborate with. Great. Um, this is a great question and a good one probably to end it because it could uh, mean something for each of our panelists. Um, what have you all learned the most from the pandemic and what will you change now that you know that? So maybe I'll start with you, Jason. That is a really hard question. I'm not quite sure how to respond to that. Um, but one thing that uh, one thing that we we've tried to learn, at least on on some of the initiatives that we've been doing, is um, we just want to make sure that you know there's a lot of different ways people are living their lives right now, and we just want to make sure that we're adding value uh, to people's lives during this very very difficult time. And if we can do that, um, that's amazing. So that's basically one of the main insights that I've had uh, during the pandemic. Yeah, Sarah, do you want to take a shot? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've learned 42 different things personally and professionally and, um, but I would say that um, there is, you know, it sounds very cheesy, but we spent a lot of the year chronicling uh, the heroes of the pandemic and the people emerged in um, a time of great darkness to be great leaders, uh, selfless, generous, imaginative, and I think Toronto, there was a certain kind of heart that was located in Toronto that we loved chronicling. And it's not that I didn't know that before, but it was a joy to watch. And I think um, we'll continue to inform the work that we do. Amazing. Charlotte, how about you? Uh, well, I, I learned to make a really amazing strawberry galette, which I was very proud of. So I just want to give myself a pat on the back for that one. Good for you. Um, but I, I think from a from a work perspective, what I really saw was just how well individuals can connect through these digital forums. And I think that's something that we've really taken so many great learnings from in terms of like the best ways to connect. And just really the fact that we could connect this way in really meaningful ways um, in such a challenging time and how, how much of a, a real hunger there was for that connection. And I think that will really continue and it will really inform um, how we uh, not only produce our journalism moving forward and the platforms we share it across, but how we run our events and how we, um, specifically at Canadian Business, how we're really aiming to continue to connect individuals that um, uh, are really looking for these networking opportunities and looking to find like-minded people to connect with. Mm, wonderful. Allison? These are really great answers. Um, <laughs> I... Yeah, I knew this before the pandemic for sure, but I didn't know if it was possible for me to fall even more deeply in love with journalism. I, I felt I was in pretty deep as it was, but um, this year has reinforced and taught me in, in so many ways that about, retaught me the power of journalism and the importance of journalism. Um, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, we were talking a lot about the curve. Um, flattening the curve, people would say, and yet the data was not assembled and um, released by the government. McLean's did that. We crunched the number and we created the first curve that lasted for about a month online until until bureaucrats caught up and 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 um, produced it for the country. It was really really necessary information that was not available but for journalism. That's one very small example. And I, honestly, I could go for two hours about um, the extent to which, not obviously McLean's played, played a role, but um, the role that all of our publications played, our competitors included, importantly, our competitors in, um, in showing, as, as Sarah says, the incredible heroism of this year, um, but also pointing out the difficulties and ways in which uh, people who lead us could do better next mm -hmm. time. Um, and I'm, I'm so proud to be part of the profession and the craft that, that does that. So yeah, it's a, it's a lesson relearned for me. Um, Good, nice. Yeah. Um, and lastly, I'll say that, um, you know, I think the one thing we, we were challenged with um, being uh, all working from home was, you know, staying connected. And I think, you know, it forced us to really find 
uh, new ways and how important it was to reach out and uh, call someone or, you know, go for a walk with them. And um, as much as we've pivoted to, you know, virtual events, I just can't wait to get back together because I don't think, you know, brainstorming is quite as effective uh, doing it virtually as it will be when we're all back together. But I guess that's the one um, thing that, that Les and I took away from the pandemic is how important, you know, really caring about each other and staying connected with, you know, how you are, how people are doing on your team, not just from um, a work level, but from a personal level as well, because, you know, this has been difficult. This has been difficult for a lot of people. But with that, um, I will wrap it up and say thank you all to our panelists, but thank you more to all the people that showed up today to kind of hear um, our latest version of, of what we've been up to for the last little bit. I hope you came away with learning a bit uh, more about uh, these three exciting brands and, and a little bit more about some of the opportunities of how we can work together in the future. So um, thank you again. There will be, um, Jess will follow up with uh, the three lucky winners of our, the iPod and the Longos gift cards. Um, so thank you again for tuning in. And we really, really do look forward to having this next uh, update in the fall be one in person where we can uh, toast a glass to having survived the pandemic together. All right, everyone. So take care and bye for now.